a conflict of interest are, if you're a faculty member, uh, if you're, if you're um, a mentor and the guiding principle is just to refresh your memory, you can't service these teams as a provider, okay? You have to, you, they have to come to me and they have to ask for permission. And that to give a justification as to why. You're not allowed to service them other than in a mentor role. Changes the relationship, you're not allowed to invest in them while they're in the accelerator. That could change after they graduate. And we hope that it does, because we think that that's an important reason why you'd be a part of us. But in their learning phase, this is going to be as pure of an environment as we can keep it. And that's a function of managing the processes and the policies that are in place so that everybody keeps above board and we don't get sideways. Does that make sense? OK. Conflict of interest at a, in, at a university is a, is, is a pretty big deal. You have to disclose if you're a faculty member. Um, and make sure that you know your conflict of interest committee members, because this is very new work for them, commercializing and, and being in a startup. But they have been forewarned that we are now going to be produced as a mechanism to produce a lot of teams. But just remember, they're still new at it. Um, so deal with it early um, versus later. So you don't run into any issues. I will help you with that. OK? Um, statement of principles. This is uh, Exhibit C. These are the governing principles of our mentor program and adopted by the MIT process. OK? So very specific rules around team mentoring, around um, how we manage the teams, and that sort of thing. And you'll learn a little bit more about that again as we go on. But you have the agreements that every mentor has to sign off on. And they're a formal volunteer of Texas Tech system. So they go through background checks. And um, they've been approved. So safe zone, OK? If there's any questions as you read through that, please let me know. Uh, principles for executives, that is Exhibit D. Um, this might seem like something that should be obvious, but believe it or not, when someone wants to have a business in cannabis, that raises a question at a university, right? So it's in place to help you, to help us, to remember that we are dealing with a university and our brand is really important to us. And boy, this stuff, when it hits the news and gets spun out of control in some way, we want to know first, right? We want to keep, I have two rules. Weston, what are my two rules? <laughs> Safety first and keep you and us out of jail. Okay, so if we can do that, we're going to have some fun. But it's very important that we remember that um, ethics and, and all of the things that are associated with this principles of executives is, is something that we follow um, and we take very serious, okay? All right, and then payment schedule. Um, entrepreneur, oh, exhibit E is entrepreneur acknowledgements and release form. I need all of the teams to release mentors from liabilities and sign off on that form as well. Payment schedule and financial reporting. Uh, this is kind of what I talked about in the two tranches and who those invoices go to. Carly, if you can raise your hand in the back of the room, she is all things funding around here for me. Um, and she's the one that makes sure that uh, the teams get their funding and report the way they need to to keep everything copacetic, OK? So if you have questions around that, she can help. She will be talking more about that later. All right, any questions on the accelerator agreement? I know that's a lot. No questions? No? OK. All right, we've talked about um, the guiding principles. We